Welcome back, and thank you for choosing Current Connected. Today, we're going to be going over this SOK battery, 12-slot outdoor battery rack. This is designed to fit your typical server rack batteries. It's not limited to just SOK. It can fit many different brands. There's a lot of features that make this great, so let's dive in and check it out. Getting started on the front, you'll notice there is a cutout in each door. This cutout is for a 48 volt DC powered air conditioner heat pump. So this will be able to provide heating and cooling and climate control for your batteries. That is pretty important considering a lot of lithium batteries can't charge below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Moving over next, we have a door latch here. And this is a metal door latch with a key lock. Once you unlock the key, you can just hit the button and the latch comes open and then we're in the rack. Let's get some measurements on this so that we can give some perspective on the size. From left to right, it is 48 and a half inches. From front to back, up here at the top, the widest point is 25 and a half inches. And we are 56 and three quarter inches tall. So it's a pretty decent size. However, considering the amount of energy it can store within, it's actually rather compact. Let's take a look inside. We can see six slots on the left, six slots on the right, and we have positive and negative bus bars down in the middle. Now the openings in between the shelves are a 4U opening, and that's perfect for the SOK rack batteries. However, it could easily fit either a 3U or 3.5U, something like a Ruxu battery or EG4 battery as well. There are no limitations really on this. Here on the door you can see there are six Phillips head screws that easily come out, and then this knockout comes out, facilitating room for an air conditioner. And then you'll notice the rack is insulated with fire resistant insulation. That is throughout the whole thing and it's approximately 3 8 to a half inch thick. The doors are sealed all the way around with a rubber gasket and we have heavy duty metal hinges holding the doors to the cabinet. This rack includes four gauge battery cables. You'll notice there are short ones and there are long ones. Now the approach to cabling on this rack is a little bit different. This battery on the right, they typically have the negative terminal on the right hand side. So the longer cable would go behind here into the other bus bar. And then the short red cable would go to the positive bus bar here in this bay. And then on the opposite side of the rack, you would have a red cable coming to this bus bar and a short black cable going to the black bus bar. You may wonder why we didn't just do a bus bar on each side of the enclosure. Well, the problem with going that approach is it doesn't give us equal distance to every single battery. You have a jumper between the bus bars in the middle, and I didn't really like that when I was working with the design team on this, so this was the approach we settled on. Now, two screws remove this protective cover that hides the exposed connection of the bus bar. Behind that, you'll see the actual bus bar itself. Now, this is a brass bus bar, and it is approximately an inch wide by an eighth inch thick, and it has a steel backer. And the reason we did that is because brass on its own is not very good at holding threads, and the pin nuts that go into brass are not very strong. They tend to twist. So we have the pin nut in the steel backer, so the bolts can be tightened to the proper torque of 10 foot-pounds without worrying about the threads yielding. These bolts are an M8 by 1.25 thread. The shelves are held into this rack with some M6 machine screws with a number three Phillips head. The shelves can easily be removed with four screws and that allows you the opportunity to clear some space for equipment like inverters. Let's say you wanted to move one of the bus bars to the outermost sides of the cabinet. The negative bus bar can be put on the far right side of the cabinet and the positive bus bar can be put on the far left side. So what that allows you to do is convert it to a six bay uh, rack with the bus bars on the outside. And then you can use the other bay for holding stuff like inverters or solar controllers that may not be outdoor rated or able to be mounted on the outside of the rack. This gives you a lot of flexibility because it's not just a battery rack. It can also be an inverter holder and have your essentially your entire system all contained within the rack. The bottom of this rack has some pockets. This will fit either a standard size pallet jack or you could use a forklift to maneuver it into place. That makes things easy because if you were to fill this rack with batteries, you could then just take it on the job site or to the installation site and just set it down in place and be ready to power things on. 
Here's a demonstration to give you a better idea of what I meant. I went ahead and took all the shelves out of the left side so you can see there's plenty of room to put inverters in here. I could practically climb in there. And then over here on the left side, we have the bus bars left and right. So we could simply run our short cables from the battery to the bus bars and then uh, just have some main cables coming off the bottom uh, running through to our inverters. So a lot of options with this rack. It's um, pretty awesome. I think a couple of changes we're going to be making in production will add some great features that you guys will like. But other than that, this is uh, essentially version one. And if you guys have any feedback, questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comments down below. And we're also needing your help for some ideas for videos. So if you have anything to suggest, go ahead and throw that in the comments down below as well. But we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.